Hello Buryat! Welcome back to my channel. This is Indai Buryat and this is Dudung. Hello, hello! Dudung Eric. So today mga Buryat, we are very excited to share our journey to you. From when we first met in 2019 starting December the 9th. Okay, so if you are new to my channel, mga Buryat, please hit subscribe and click the bell for more notification for our new video and our journey together. So, let's get started! Yay! Where it all started. Yes, where it all started in 2019. What happened in 2019? Uh, 2019, um, I was here visiting my um, adopted family. So I was already in uh, Cebu, and I was in uh, I was on uh, Cherry Blossom, but I wasn't really looking because I was just looking forward to having fun, spending time with my family and my grandkids. Um, they're adopted, and um, so on. Um, I believe it was the 9th of December. Yes. Um, you, I saw your picture. I'd never seen her picture before. And uh, I said, oh, wow, I read her profile and she was a Christian and she was in school. She also worked at a radio station. She had her DJ, DJ outfit on and, talk, you know, a picture of talking. And then she said she taught Sunday school. And um, so I, I said, oh, you know, I said, she's mighty young, though. I think based on our calculation, I figured she was 24. And she actually was 23, but she had 24 on there. And um, so I wrote her, and I had a real long uh, introduction. What did my introduction say? What, what it's, my... A, it's very long introduction. If I'm going to read it now in front of them, it's going to take six hours. Just check along. Ang haba, guys. The introduction of Eric is very, very long. So to make this the long story short, it captured my attention to his... Um, profile and the email that he sent to me so it was about 12 o'clock at night yes in Philippine time and uh, so I saw my picture and I said hmm. so I read her profile and I looked at her photos and I read it again and again and again and I said well you know she's mighty young but she sounds so intelligent and mature and she's a Christian foundation of Christianity she taught Sunday school, she goes to church, and she said they had a church in their house. So I said, I'm going to write her. So at 12 o'clock, I wrote her, and uh, I responded to things she had in her profile so she knew it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a copy and paste. It was things pertaining to what she said in her introduction. So I forgot to say something after I sent the first message. So I wrote a second message and said, well, I forgot to say this. And uh, I sent it, and I said, well, I... Hopefully she'll respond. So I didn't go to sleep because ordinarily I would have just gone to bed and the next day I would have checked it. But I got up at one o'clock and checked and to my surprise, she had responded. And now explain that, hun, about you like to go to bed early. So yeah. why were you up at 12 o'clock and one o'clock? I don't know. It's just like for that Russian man came. And I met that Russian man in that dating site also. And I said to myself, guys, that this is my last time opening this website because it's been three months I've been there and I don't see anything, any man that is serious. So I said, okay, this would be my last time. If I receive a good email, that's good. But if I did not receive, so goodbye, I will leave there. But suddenly one o'clock, guys, I receive... I saw his profile already, but I did not have a courage to message him because you know, uh, hindi hindi siya yung hinahanap ko. <laughs> Pero uh, he messaged me first, and then the email was very very long, and I read it one by one. The sentences and the phrasing is very compatible with my introduction, and. That's the reason why I responded to his email. And then I did not notice that after I responded to email, his long email, he responded back. So that was started in December 9. And it started those times. So December 9, we started to talk in dating site and then we exchange our messenger and i did not know that he was already here in the philippines because he had an adopted family here with yes. 
um, uh, four kids and he was here in the Philippines to take vacation together with them and then I did not know that he would really really come in my province to meet me and my family so um, I did not really go to Cebu to meet him or go to Dumaguete or in the airport just to meet him no um, I said to myself that if this man is real if this man is the real man i will not going to meet him by myself in far places but if he's real he will come here in my place and just only two weeks guys december 30 he came to mabinai we bringing with a lot of boxes of big bible yes because you see the the real special part was i was not really looking and I was about to give up on uh, Cherry Blossom because I said, I'm just not meeting, you know, just not meeting anyone. But then, you know, I saw her profile and I just was compelled to write her at 12 o'clock at night. And what was more astounding was she responded within an hour and I got up and checked and saw her response. And it started from there. And uh, we started chatting um, about Christianity and I told her that we had a ministry and we were we provide Bibles and children's Bible booklets to, you know, to people to spread the word of God. And she says, oh, wow. So I asked her, um, I found that she had a church in her house. They have church in her, you know, in, in her house. And I said, well, how many members do you have? And she says, well, over a hundred. I said, well, maybe, you know, I could bring 50 Bibles so that you could distribute them and some Bibles for the kids too, some Bible booklets. And then we said, well, I said, well, it's over 100. Why don't I bring maybe 100? And then some Bible booklets, they're coloring books for the kids that have stories of Jonah and the whale and Moses and Bible stories, and they can color as well. So we started talking, and I asked my adopted son, I said, well, where's Mabinai? And he said, well, that's, you know, he told me where it was, and he was planning to come to visit his family in Negroes, but then all of a sudden he couldn't get off work. So he says, well, we can't, we can't go. Well, I said, well, I want to go meet Hart because, you know, I think she's very nice. And when we started chatting, I talked to her mother. She said, hello, uh, Eric, how are you? And she says, uh, you know, she asked a few questions and, you know, she, you know, she was qualifying my feelings for her daughter, of course, just starting off. And the Russian guy had just come, so they were kind of remembering yes. that too. Yeah, we were very disappointed that time. So we chatted some and then we exchanged uh, messenger and we started talking about every day. And uh, so I told my son, well, I want to go. So what does a bus ticket cost to Mabina? Because I didn't know how to get there. And we looked up the tickets and we actually got to the bus station with all the Bibles. I had five boxes of Bibles, 100 Bibles and another box of Bible booklets for the, you know, for the kids. And all the buses were full because people were going back home because of the holiday. Yeah, that is December, guys. And you know, every December or holiday, the bus or the ticket are so expensive in a plane. And the terminal buses is, is very crowded because the people are going back to their family, to their provinces. So when Eric went to the terminal, guys, uh, his adopted family said that dad it's so crowded and his family could not bring him to Mabinai because uh, he had a work but he is very eager guys to go I said imagine I was, I was imagine, <laughs> imagine the bus guys and he is he did not know yet how to ride a bus supposedly that's your first time my, right my first time so see that's why I'm also attracted to them that time it because it was very far from my province here in Cebu, going to my province and bringing with all those boxes Bibles and then imagine the bus is so crowded. So, so very effort. Yes, so my, my son said, I tell you what, Dad, we will take, I will take a day off and I will, we will take you to Mabinai because we don't want you to, we know, we, we care about your safety and we know that, you know, a foreigner traveling with all these boxes of Bibles, it may not be safe. So they they brought me to Mabinai and I met Hart and um, she and her family were so receptive to me and my family and they all helped us take the the boxes of Bibles down to the house and her mom was so nice she had uh, breakfast prepared for us and, and all of our family and the kids 
and everybody was just so warm and receptive. And uh, my son and his family were planning to stay, you know, pretty much all day. But all of a sudden, he got an emergency call. He had to go to work. So he he felt confident that I was in good hands and I was safe after he met Hart and her family and her, her mother. And Hart's mother, she's so sweet, she gave them vegetables, uh, root crops, uh, what was it, hun? Mm. Corn, vegetables. Vegetables, yes. vegetables to take back. So I stayed in Mabini for about three days. Uh, Hart gave me her room and um, th their, their family, her mom, her dad, her sisters, her brother, they were also friendly and we went to the cave in Mabini. Uh, her mom, everybody, we all went. After that, we had a pic. We, we planned a picnic, picnic. at the uh, at the lake. This lake in Mabini. It was um, Highland Lake. Highland Lake. Yeah, we were and, fishing. And they were fishing, and and mom was there, and everybody. We just had so much fun. And um, then one day we went to the uh, Mabini Spring, yes. and uh, Hart and her sister were swimming, and her sister says. Uh, his sister Gigi, you may know Gigi. Yeah, Gigi. Gigi said, uh, so Hart was swimming and me and Gigi were in the water. And she said, so you like my sister? And I said, yes, I, th I think she's, she's very nice. She's interrogating you. She's, she's, she's interrogating me, making sure my intentions are good, as any good sister would do. So she's looking out for her baby sister. And uh, everything was so nice. Uh, we went to Kabankalan on the bus. And I just felt so welcomed and warm. And I was there for New Year's. So we passed out the Bibles uh, at New Year's when they had the, when the members came. And, and people were so excited. And we got ink pens so they could sign their names on their, on their Bibles. And the kids got their Bible booklets. And they, they were so happy. And um, they asked me to say some, you know, a few words to the congregation. So I was talking in English and Hart was there interpreting in Visaya, translating. translating in uh, Visaya. And it was just so nice. I, was, I just felt so warm and so loved. And it was just an experience I had never had, I'd never had before. Uh, I told Hart and her mom was so nice. They made, you know, me put watermelon juice and cooked nice food and, and did my clothes and laundry. And we all just bonded as a family as if I had known them all along. They, they just were so warm and welcoming. And, you know, the Lord was there. We talked about the Bible. We sang songs uh, during the church services. So when I got ready to leave, our heart was, of course, she was sad. And I said, well, I'm going back to my being. I'm going back to Cebu. So she took her time to make sure I got on the bus, uh, Gigi, and she took me to the terminal. And then she says, I'm going to go ride with the bus. I'm going to ride with you on the bus to the barge. So she made sure I got a good seat and she rode with me. And then she rode on the barge and that was like a little voyage. We were looking over the balcony on the on the bus, on the barge. It was like a, a voyage in a ocean liner, really. And we were just having fun talking and that was part of our date and getting to know each other. Yeah. That was that's what we call our our first or romantic, romantic voyage. voyage. <laughs> in in the barge. And we were standing on the bridge looking over the water and just just enjoying each other. And I was looking at her and she was looking at me. And I had this huge backpack. Mm. And this is funny. I wish I had gotten a picture of it. She had the backpack carrying it for me. And the backpack was so big. And I said, look at this, this little girl carrying this huge backpack that's almost bigger than she is. It was so funny. <laughs> but uh, when, I got, when we got to the other side on the barge, she made sure I got on the bus going back to Cebu. And I just was so amazed and thankful that she took time from her busy schedule to just make sure that I got back safely. And we talked on, on Messenger the whole time I was traveling until I got back to Cebu and my, you know, my son picked me up. And then we kept talking and then she said, you know, um, I want to come to Cebu to visit you. And I have some friends there too. And I said, really? And see, her birthday was approaching too because her birthday was on December 9th. No. Uh, January 9th, excuse me. <laughs> January 9th. Correction. So she came to Cebu and um, we had a great time. We went to SM Mall. We had our first romantic dinner at Perilia. That's a, El Corso. El, a nice restaurant at El Corso. We took pictures over there and we walked and saw the ocean and walked on the, you know, the little, they had a ship over there. We played on the ship. 
And it was so nice. Then we went to SM uh, Mall. That was a huge mall and we had dinner there and everything was just so nice. And um, I got her uh, um, a handbag for her birthday. And she, I, I was gonna give her some money for her birthday and she didn't wanna take it. She says, no, I can't take it. I said, no, I said, it's your birthday. It was a uh, 5,000 pesos. And she just was not wanting to take it because you know, she felt uneasy thinking that if you take money from someone, you expect something or they may expect something, which uh, that wasn't the case, but that's just, that's just being cautious. <laughs> In thy boy yet, take it away. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, he always loved to talk, guys. So I just right. going to block him because I need to talk too. You yes, know? yes. It's her channel. She you know what, talk. guys? After he came to Mabinai, to my place, um, I wanted to come here in Cebu just to um, pay back the goodness he he is spending us in Mabinai. So I just always thinking that imagine uh, he really wanted to come here even though the bus is crowded. So I just want to visit him guys just a, a pay back or just you no know, give and take because he went there and it's time for me to come here but I just want to clarify guys um, he already here uh, had a condo here in Cebu but when I came here um, he gave me also his room and he is sleeping in the living room and I am sleeping his room also and his family are there also the first and the second nine night but I was so scared for the third night. Their family did not come home in the condo. So it's just only me and him. So I did not really know him that well the time because we are starting to know each other. So, you know, as a Filipina, we already know about uh, other guys who are just going to take um, advantage to the girl. But he is different. And I locked the door. I'm different. I locked the door guys and he heard it that I locked the door. He said, oh, that's okay. He, he was, I expected her to. Oh. And I was keeping my distance because see my family for that particular night, one of my grandkids was sick and they couldn't come. So it was just me and her and I expected them to be there. So I kept my distance. I stayed away from her and she locked the door and I stayed in the living room and everything was fine. Yeah. And you know what guys? When I come here in Cebu, it's very normal to a Filipino to gossip that, oh, she wants to Cebu because, you know, that, that thing, that he is, she is meeting the, the guy and it will happen. But honestly, guys, we are already three years, but we did not engage those things. Not till marriage. Yes. And, and also, I want to interject that knowing her birthday was coming, I prepared my room for her. It was a pink room I got. <laughs> Tell, tell them what happened. You know what, guys? I was surprised when I came here in Cebu because when I opened my room, it's full of pink stuff. He asked me before what is my favorite color. <laughs> so before, we're not really much sure that time. So I said, to him, oh, I think my favorite color is pink. So I did not expect, guys, that when I opened the room, it was all of pink stuff the the towel the slipper the he was making a gift he was wrapping a gift and also the gift is pink, pink and paper. then my sleeper is pink I'm a rapper. he gave me a money for my birthday but pink I card. Don't, yeah and a little cake i don't want to receive money from him it because you know as a filipino mindset things that if you if you receive a money from a man maybe the man is asking for a payment or aside from that it's just already clear in my mind that he really wanted to help me because i have a problem with my eyes that time i have a problem and i uh, every week i went to the hospital to do the checkup of my eye in the collar yes and he said that come on take it and use it as a um take it as you go to the hospital use this money i said okay i i said okay you you find a, a reason so i said because I, I knew she had to buy these expensive eye drops she had to travel on the bus four hours from Abina to Bacala. and i said well you know this can help offset the cost of your trip and your eye and your eye drops for your you know for your eyes so she says okay okay so she did she did take it yes uh 
as a birthday present. And then she had money too. She bought me a shirt from SM uh, Seaside. You know what guys, I, I also aside from that thinking, I did not accept the money because um, I'm scared of maybe what will be the people will say that of course as a Filipino or mostly of the people so we have very our age gap different. So uh, the Filipino uh, mindset that Filipina will just asking money for you or I'm just a gold digger so I'm just trying to prove to all that uh, you know I just want to accept it because I did not do anything and and then just all my mind before but he pushed it, he pushed me that uh, not to think that way right because I knew she wasn't that way she she had her own money she had her money that she worked for and she actually spent some money on me to get me a shirt. And I thought that was so thoughtful. I said, but you don't have it. She said, no, no, I want to. So she, she paid for my shirt. And uh, it was a nice experience. And you know, people are gonna talk anyway. Yeah. Uh, if they see two people come out of a condo, they're gonna assume you're sleeping together. But we know what's happening and the Lord knows. So we didn't worry about that. We just focused on getting to know each other and um, making the best of the time we had together before I had to leave on January 15th going back to the United States yes and also guys um, uh, that was the first month that we met yes. and then he also during our conversation he was saying I love you he was saying I love you that he loves me but I never and never never well, not said the first month that was months later oh yeah I month, months later months later I was back in the United States oh yes I would I knew she loved me because she was playing songs on her guitar her actions told me, and I would say this was after like six months or so, and I knew I, I felt very strong. She was the one, and I was falling in love with her, based on our conversations and getting to know her. And I would say, "I love you, hon. Oh, I love you, heart." And she wouldn't say anything. Yeah. And but I knew I'm she. Scared. But I didn't say you didn't tell me you love me. I didn't say I didn't say that because I knew when she was ready, she would say it. But I could tell by her actions what she was doing. She was writing poems. Poems. She was singing songs. She was doing all these things that let me know that she loved me. And and after uh, after a while, she she started saying it because I wanted to actually come back to the Philippines to ask her parents for their approval to start our in our um, courtship. Yes, um, I am the kind of girl, guys, that um, there's so many men courting to me. Like younger man or younger. <laughs> oh, there's so many men courting to me, but I don't. I don't know why. <laughs> I love you. I don't know why I went to Eric. <laughs> it because guys, Eric is different from all of the the men that are courting to me because. Um, in the generation, kasi, when the man says, I love you too, this is the reason why I don't really respond to him when he said, I love you before. It because if I say, I love you too, it means we are um, official or I said already yes to him. That's my mindset. But I said, when he said to me that I love you, I just only said, thank you. And he said, mm, he am I going to say it when, it, when it's, uh, he is, she is ready. That's and what I said to myself. I said, I didn't say anything to her because this was after about eight months of us talking every day yes. on Messenger and sending emails. And she made this nice uh, video after I left. Um, maybe, I think it's on one of the um, channels, isn't it? The video you made for me? Yes, yes. It was with, a Two years ago. Okay. No, three years ago. Three years, three years ago. Yeah. And uh, so I did uh, feel that Hart was the one. Uh, I kind of felt a, a real strong attraction from the beginning because I knew no matter what had happened with anybody else I'd met, Hart was different. And we started with a clean slate, meaning I didn't carry over any bad feelings or something that happened with someone else. That was that person. This was different. Hart was different. The way we met, it was centered and based on the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ, which our relationship still is. Yes, and then uh, that time, guys, uh, I told him that I don't want to answer or saying yes through just cell phone. I, if you are, um, if you are really 
uh, going into this relationship, you can ask first my parents and my family. You need approval to them first because, um, you know, I have a big respect to my family, especially my parents, because I'm not here in this world without them. So I told him to ask first permission to my parents before I said uh, what what would be my response to you. So he is planning to come back here in the Philippines, guys, to ask um, personally uh personally asked my parents hands to court me but suddenly the covid started that time and it's it the philippines was already locked down so and it's already nine months guys it's been a while and he did a lot of things even though we are ldr we keep a video call and he is sending me a package also for me and my family and then i was realized that oh it's it's been almost a year so um during i think during my birthday yes I. during my birthday guys i said to him i said yes to him so <laughs> and you see the funny thing about it was i already knew she loved me because even her best friend said you know she you know she loves you she just she just won't say it i said i know i know she'll say it when she's ready but um i was talking with um her sisters her mom her dad we all talked. They all knew me. And um, my mom started, her mom started calling me son. Mm -hmm. And I would call her it's, mom. It's awkward for the first time we heard that um, his age is older than my mom's age. And then he called mom, mom. So, hmm. And she's calling me son. And her sister said, what? mom is calling him son. <laughs> and, and, you know, some of them are married. And she, she didn't even call their husband son. Mm -hmm. But so that's how the bond I had with her mom. That's why I can <laughs> say that my mom is very close to him, even though we are not an official relationship. I don't know. It's just every day my mom is always asking about him. Like my mom, when during a video, go, hi, son, I miss you, son. Well, like you are the real son than me, <laughs> than, the, than her daughter. <laughs> so, so that's it, guys. And uh years by years um for three years of a relationship we can really tell hano but L that ldr relationship is very different when you are together in yes. reality because even though guys we are in three years of relationship we consider our relationship as just new because we are just new um to each other like in, physically and personally in reality, in reality. but but the the good thing about the ldr was we talked a lot about everything mm -hmm. all topics and she kept saying my english is not that good my english is not that good. i said what do you mean you're speaking english almost as good as me what do you mean that's what she, that's what she first said and um so we talked about so many things and when you are on a in a ldr you learn a person i call it from the inside out meaning when you see a person and you see them physically you learn them as time goes on but when you're in an LDR, you do a lot of talking, you find out the person's heart. You find them out from the inside out because you're not really there. And when you talk a lot, you you answer and, and ask all kind of questions and you you just you know, you just learn so much so much about each other. And then when you get together, um, just, because of the travel ban, I wasn't able to come for over two and a half years. So I didn't come until September 2022 and there's a video of when we met at that time that Indy Boy has put on the on the uh, channel so you can check that out but um you know I felt like I had known her so much since then but we've adjusted and we're getting along well and we just wanted to let you guys know that um how we met our story and um it's still it's still going on it's it's going on every day yes this is my honey bunny <laughs> So, love you. Mm. so that's it guys i'm sorry that the video was taking 30 minutes that we are talking in camera so long we're just very excited to share our journey and i hope guys you you being um happy to see us and if you have a comment please comment down below and if you are interested to find a good man and uh, just try to click the cherry blossom in the cherry description blossom. box and
here's our journey thank Salamat. you so much guys for always supporting us and watching our videos and our journeys together so thank you so much guys Salamat. more videos to come bye 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 bye